Well, that was not graceful. Carillon Center. This peaceful Carmine institution was founded by devils from London and dedicated to the betterment of the soul. Botheridge's A Tour of Heaven describes it as a cross between a spa, a sanatorium, and purgatory. She commends its bracing airs. Enter the foyer or travel around Carillion. Let's get a port report first. Oh, I don't think that's the port report thing, is it? Enter the foyer? Yes, write a port report. The penitents come from all corners of the high wilderness. Someone will want to hear of their comings and goings. You take some notes on a pilgrim's journey through Carillon. The first port of call is the beehive-shaped office in the center, or more accurately, the long queue leading into it. From there, the infernal attendants direct them to one of Carillon's seven gardens to undergo penances. They certainly look penitent by the time they emerge. Presumably their souls are much improved. Not that you can tell. Grace stone, the color of a monastery. Attending devils and devilesses dressed in uniform. And an incoming parade of the sick, the friendless, the dying, and those who think their lives would be better if they... If only they were something else. This is Carillon, where souls are refined into something more impressive. To do this one, I need a bunch of things. Establishment. I need the abst... Abstem... Abst... Abstemious? Abstemious Devil's Commission. Let's speak to the presiding deviless. She is an artisan of souls. Perhaps she can do something with yours. Perhaps she'll just offer you, you advice. The presiding deviless works in an office shaped like a beehive. A stone and wickerwork building that stands all alone in the middle of Carillon's central courtyard. She conducts intake interviews with new patients, one by one. After a long time in line, you reach her at last. Greetings, comrade. How may we stretch, strain, purify, and strengthen you now that you've come to Carillon? <laughs> they look really cool. Her apron is starched, her dress pinstriped. There is a stack of patient files on her desk, color-coded. The corners of her mouth say she knows something to your disadvantage. What do these require? I need jumbles of undistinguished souls for these. You can only do this once. Oh my god, this requires... This requires a lot. Let's just ask them about Carillon. She must be used to explaining to newcomers and to those whose memories are attenuated by pain. We do whatever is necessary to reclaim unsatisfactory souls, she says. She sits back in her chair, and you can imagine her making just such a pitch to the princes of hell. For humans, primarily, though we do attend to a few other creatures elsewhere on the Great Chain. They come to us with souls that are stained, disused in every kind of sordid condition, and we make them acceptable again. Most of those who come to us are volunteers. The rest are beyond the positions of being able to volunteer, consigned to Carillon by their families or employers. I'm now an initiate of Carillon. I've met the presiding deviless. And after a stay at Carillon, what then? One should not enter if one does not know how to leave. Most people go home again, she says. Some find that they are wary of their souls and pass them on to us. We operate on that slender profit and on what we can get from donations or from sales of penance and forgiveness. She looks at the blank page before her. What about you? You look sturdy enough to make full use of our services. Are you afraid of needles? What is your view of worms? Which do you fear more, venoms or poisons? She takes down a page or two on all your least favorite things. <laughs> Great. She's prepared to offer you a deal. Hmm. Sure. 
Listen, she says. You are free to make use of Kurilin. Take a penance or two. Alter your soul. I think you'll find her services very imaginative. There is another matter I hope you'll look into. A devil in rose-colored gloves. He used to supervise the Gaslight Terrace. He was removed from that position, but I fear he may still not be entirely aligned with the objectives of Kirillin. If you find out anything about him, anything to this, to his disadvantage, she looks grim, bring me the evidence and I will reward you. A devil in rose-colored gloves. Okay. That's all for now. Let's return to the center of Kirillin. Come back if you have any other questions, says the Devil S. She's already opened the next file on her desk. Let's travel around Kirillin. Kirillin is broken into terraces where most of the soul treatments take place. Some are easier to access than others. I need the Devilus's permission to room Carillon. Bell Garden, Checkerboard Garden, Stunted Grove. Oh, right, all seven of them, was it? Penance, excess can be gained here. You need a stained soul to be admitted. I already have a stained soul. How did it get stained? I think I started to like that. Clear for that, flickering for this. Hmm. Oh, the Gaslight Terrace, that's where the person with the rose-colored gloves used to work. Dozens of newcomers walk in that direction, must be a safe choice. I can get Enlightenment. The Bell Garden, the ascent is rocky, the sound of chimes is audible all the way down here. Penance deprivation, what am I... Do I want penance? I... Hmm. Shift of perspective, ordeal. Hmm. Let's visit the Gaslight Terrace. Your companions are a lady in a button cloak and a young male student. They talk among themselves about the reasonable or seasonable warmth, and about how the yellowish glow of the lamps does not show blue silk to best effect. Their words are commonplace, their hands folded and gloved. Their opinions supplied by a respectable gazette. You have almost forgotten them even while you are still walking together. The path descends by shallow steps to a broad terrace as crowded as an imperial ex exhibition. Gaslight lampposts are scattered irregularly across a flagstone terrace. Between them are stations, each containing a patient receiving a treatment. Supervising devils tend these stations, stopping first here and then there, like bees at flowers. 39% chance of success to gain a penance of enlightenment. Or approach the spineless curate. <laughs> hmm. Let's do that. He sits in stocks, attended on by a devilish orderly. At the nearest station, a curate has been shackled into an ordinary pillory. Let's meet them. His eyes beseech you to visit him. I've seen something. In this light, it's hard not to see things. A devilish orderly jabs the curate with a needle. At the sight of the jab, the curate's skin goes lavender. I'm being treated for not believing in God. <laughs> Wait, what? I've tried everything. Prayer, fasting, long weekends with a professional saint. None of it worked. My sermons were suffering. My bishop complained. And has it helped? I have dreams of snakes and angels, he says. It hasn't made me a mystic. I don't think the devils are real either. Just men with funny eyes, aren't they? The devilish orderly smiles with extra teeth. Being treated for not believing in God. Hmm. The curate needs freeing. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like they should be released. 
Ah, I don't have any near the things to get him out. Need a shift of perspective. Penance enlightenment. Okay, leave him to his penance for now. Let's try to gain a penance of enlightenment. Vision, imagination, the ability to see beyond the nearest convention. That's what the devils are trying to evoke here. 39% chance of success. Oh, nice. A professional chaperone is prone to sloth and conversations about needlepoint. As punishment, she's receiving a tattoo of Empyrean sigils. Do you feel any more interesting now? Asks the supervising devil. As for your punishment, it does not bear speaking of. For a month afterwards, you see devils dancing in the corners of your eyes. Right, what else did I need? If I wanted to do something, either pay the price or pay an alternate currency. Hmm. I don't know about an alternate currency. Oh, you need five, five enlightenments instead of one enlightenment and a shift of perspective. That makes me think that the shift of perspective is maybe pretty hard to get. I didn't mean to go back that far. Actually, that's kind of a good thing, though. I need a shift of enlightenment. Or a shift of perspective, rather. That's up there. Yeah. Checkerboard Garden. It is reached by a flight of wrong-sized steps. The riser is too steep and the flats too narrow. By the time you come out onto the plane of the checkerboard, your calves are hurting. The devils are playing tricolor chess with some of the penitents. White pieces, red pieces, pieces the color of a flourishing wind. Around the edges of the board sit the patients who have already been captured, or who were never part of the game to begin with. Consider the rubbery man. Rubbery man, I don't like that. Uh, what's my chance here? Oh right, fails. Wow, so the two things I needed for that person at the beginning was um, something that I use mirrors to get and something that I use veils. This is like made for me. But first, let's consider the weird rubbery man. No one has dressed him for the chess game or let him enter the board. Speak with them. He stands off to one side, tentacles squirming. He is surprised that you approached him. He moves to make room for you, in case you are merely trying to occupy his space. When you speak to him, he offers you a squishy handshake. <laughs> By various signals, gestures, and directions of his eyes, he indicates that he has come here looking for his place in the world. Aww. You had me at the squishy handshake. Assisting a rubbery penitent. You have met a rubbery penitent. Oh, I can ask him about the devil with the rose-colored gloves. Yeah. Let's do that. Otherwise, I can redeem them. Shift of perspective five. Whew. Enlightenment plus one shift of perspective. Um, let's ask him about the devil with the rose-colored gloves. The rubbery man holds up one tentacle, representing the devil with the rose-colored gloves. Then he holds up another tentacle. After a moment, he twists the two together. Are the tentacles meant to be kissing? Is that what that is? When you look blank, the rubbery man repeats the pantomime several times. Perhaps the devil has a lover? Perhaps the devil loves the rubbery man? Perhaps the devil enjoys exotic forms of dance? Huh. Well, that's all I can do for now. Leave him alone, and let's gain penance of shift of perspective. Those who name drop, who aim too high, who spend too much time in low company, who do not know their place, they wind up here. Nice! Two successes in a row! The flourishing queen presented a child's drawing at the royal gallery. For the penitent's own good, she has a locked tongue to prevent so much as speaking the name of a superior. The supervising devil is distracted by the play on the chessboard. 
As for your punishment, it does not bear speaking of. <laughs> Once again. Okay, well, in that... I'm curious what happens when you fail, by the way. But... Anyway, now we have what we need. To, oh, shouts behind you. The White Queen is captured just as you go. But there's no time to look back at the match in progress. Uh, right, we can let this person out now. Yep, it's the same as before. Go to the Spineless Curate. And let's pay the Curate's price. His penance can be paid by someone other than himself. That's better, he says, rolling his sleeve to cover the place where the needle went in. I have a warning for you. Meet me in the bell garden. It's harder for them to overhear us there. Don't follow me right away. It wouldn't do for them to see us together. Then he strolls off. Is that all? Is that what he calls gratitude? Have you been duped completely? It remains to be seen whether he will be in the bell garden after all. Gain 200 experience. That's a lot. Okay. Well, let's... Turn to the center. You brush past a matron in gray boots, a train conductor in his uniform, and a young boy who has already adopted an expression of fixed ennui. None of them notices you passing by. None shows any interest in your breaking this convention. Ah, the bell garden. That's where penance deprivation can be gained. The ascent is rocky. The sound of chimes is audible all the way down here. You put your foot on the first step, and a devil blocks you. Those who enter the bell garden must be in a proper state of hygiene, comrade, he says. Wouldn't want to make things worse for the poor sufferers. He washes his hands in the fountain. Stopping you must have been grubby work. You've been turned away for impurity. So wait, what am I missing? Purification for the bell garden. It's very specifically for the bell garden. Perform a ritual of purification to enable entrance to the bell garden. 39% chance of success. Three successes in a row. First, remove your shoes, wash your face from the fountain of fresh water, and your feet in the basin of salt water. Walk across a patch of white sand, throwing a pebble over your left shoulder to baffle any ill-omened thing that might be following you. Then sleep in a hammock on a private balcony where only other patients may enter. When you wake up, eat a plain white bread with a salt crust. After all this, you will be ready. Okay, let's go back. You perform the necessary rituals so that you will not bring any improper airs or attitudes with you. The stairs lead up to the highest and coldest point in Carillon. The bells ring louder as you climb. The music is mathematical and exact. Each note sounds for exactly the same length of time, the same duration that is required to ascend one step. No one passes anyone else on these stairs. In a tower over the bell garden, twelve devils ring a change of twelve bells. The full peal will take eleven thousand days to complete without intermission. <laughs> From time to time, one devil relieves another, stepping in during the half minute when that particular bell is at rest. There are no errors. This mathematical music can be heard everywhere in Carillon, but it is loudest here. Impurity and imprecision are not welcome. Ah, the spineless curate is here. He's willing to talk to you here under the cover of the constant bell ringing. No one, <clears throat> no one else will hear. <laughs> if you, <laughs> I'm sure you hear that noise in the background. That's, that's my cat just playing around with a hair tie on the ground. She likes to scream while doing it. It's adorable. This is the best garden, he says. Everything orderly. No one dressed up in peasant outfits or waltzing backward. But here's what I wanted to tell you. Watch out for the tall devil with the rose-colored gloves. He is embezzling the property. And the curate makes a curious gesture with one hand as though he were winding 
noodles around a fork. When you look blank, he says, Spirophage, he's taking souls from the patients in secret before the presiding deviless has a chance at them. I'm afraid he's going to get to me before I finish my term here. Oh, secretly siphoning souls from the patients. <laughs> God, she's adorable. Now that I know what that devil is up to, I decided to go back to the presiding deviless to tell them about it. And it turns out when you leave, it kind of... But like, it's been long enough since your rite of purification that you have to do it again if you want to go back to that place. So I should have talked to everybody while I was there, but... Oh well. Anyway, I actually have two options. I can turn in the spear for... Or... I can blackmail them. You know what he did? She should know also. He is diminishing her supply after all. Like, I don't care that much that the presiding deviless is having their supply diminished, do I? I can't say I particularly like or dislike what they're doing at this place. I don't know, it all sounds a bit shady, siphoning off souls. Because it sounds like even if the spear of her is not siphoning off souls, then the presiding deviless does it. Pretty shady either way. But blackmailing... You know, blackmailing the Spearfer isn't going to change anything. Whereas if I do this, maybe it would change something? I'm going to tell him. You lay out what you know. The rose-gloved devil has been stealing souls for himself and not making proper contracts for them either. Spearfage, she says. And I warned him. After a moment, her attention returns to you. He had a very different soul when we first met. This is the trouble with friendship among devils. Come back in five years' time, and who knows? You may find me engaged in a smuggling operation of my own. Offer to take the spear for somewhere else, probe into the nature of devil souls, or demand a reward. Um, I'm going to assume that they're going to reward me later. So let's do one of the other ones. What exactly would I do with the Spear of her? Would they be a prisoner? Would they be an officer? Either way, I don't want them. Let's probe into the nature of Devil Souls. She may think it unsuitable for a human to know the answer to such questions. In fact, it might truly be unsuitable to know. She takes out a bottled soul and sets it on her desk. When I got this, it was blazing white in its bottle. Supposedly from a poet saint. And now look. Rusty pipe water. Devil souls change on their own. Then she adds, Not like yours. You knew you shouldn't ask. Interesting. That obviously goes together with what they were just saying about come back in five years or whatever and I, I might be doing a smuggling operation of my own. So for no particular reason, they just... change. That's scary. The devils of Carolyn claim to be experts in the assessment and improvement of the soul. They would describe yours as overrich, cindered, and irrevocably damaged. You now have one searing enigma and a thousand experience. Wow, those are huge rewards. Searing enigma's big. Observe the casting out of the spear of her. The presiding deviless is haranguing the spearfer in her beehive office. It looks as though the interview will not last much longer. He is not allowed to take anything with him. Not a case, not a hat, not even clothing. The presiding deviless makes him strip down in the courtyard to show that he hasn't got any spare souls tucked into his trousers. The penitents have seen plenty of humiliations lately, but generally inflicted on humans. They watch the spearfer's progress in a spirit of ill-concealed jubilation. Nude and slump-shouldered, he walks to the port. After he is gone, the presiding deviless takes a curious two-pronged fork from her desk and flings it into the fountain. The water seethes. I now have ten savage secrets. This place is absolutely just bursting with opportunities to 
do stuff. I mean, every single one of these different gardens I can go to, and it seems like they all have their own little mini events and stuff. And I've only done what, like one or two? Sort of? Mostly just one? I didn't actually free anybody else. I think every single one of them has somebody to free. Uh, but I think I'm going to save that for the next episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to do some more penance. <laughs>